This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. With me is Mr. Everlast himself and fiance of Mr. Everlast, Mr. Undisputed as well. Found the belt. Found the, the, yeah. It's here. The guy had to come and bring it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, uh, soon to be. Uh, I never forgot about you. I found you. There's too many. There's too many to remember. Soon to be a uh, wife, Josh. Correct. Yeah, soon to be. Soon to be wifey. For lifey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're at the new uh, Sports Direct store here, Oxford Street. Um, here with Everlast as well. Um, you are the face of Everlast, aren't you? Looks like it today. I, you know, coming up there and seeing the see my face on the posters and things like that so yeah it's, it's cool it's times like this when you see it and you go oh what well, you've just realised what you've, what you've did you know you see your face and things like that you go I'm actually sick of seeing your face to be fair your face is plastered everywhere <laughs> sick of seeing my own face <laughs> so Daniel obviously he was uh, away in camp for a long time in Fort Ventura and Vegas uh, did you miss him? I did. Oh, the awkward pause there. Oh. I did, but oh. my house was tidy when he was away. The minute he comes back, it's like a bomb scare. So. What have you been up to when I've been away? <laughs> what have you been up to when I've been away? That was a pause. I've got a, no, <laughs> I, no, obviously I do my son when, when he's away. Um, I'm in the house by myself, so I, I really do miss him, but I don't miss your untidiness. I must admit, like, my house is nice and tidy. So obviously last time I saw you, Josh, was at uh, Heathrow Airport where your bags didn't arrive, so we was on the plane. Um, what was the first thing you did when you got back to Scotland? I told you I had a party, you know, I was, I was on the, the champagne on the plane, you saw it. So uh, it continued, the celebration continued for a couple of days. You know, it was, uh, it was uh, yeah, it was good, good couple of days, yeah, it was just sat and got drunk in the house. I had, actually, because we were isolating, we uh, we had the, the guys that were on Vegas with come with us, so it was an isolation party. So yeah, it was good. We had the party continue. It was good. Have you stopped yet? No, I, both of us haven't stopped yet. So that's <laughs> uh, I've actually got the I'm, I'm got, I've got the shakes all the time right now. But yeah, no, it's good. Uh, you know what? It's this kind of stuff never lasts forever. So take it, enjoy take it. it as it comes and enjoy it while it's here. So yeah, Definitely. it's been good. So a uh, bit of a bizarre one last night, bumping into Logan Paul in London strange one uh, yeah. Coogan told us that on stage but you didn't give us the uh, real version of events so tell us now what was the real version what was the real version you kept calling him the wrong name oh, you kept, kept calling call him his brother you still do now you keep calling <laughs> him his brother Paul or Jake or Logan or whatever it was <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just like I think it was I've called him Paul Logan at some point oh, God uh, but no I was sitting there and it's like that looks like that uh, Jake Paul although it was Logan Paul I was like that looks like that that Paul fella and uh, Mel was sitting there. She went, "It is." So he was walking over, and he had his wee team with him, and he walked walked away. So sort of, and I went fifty and one. Like that. Yeah, was fifty and one. And he come over, and he was like, "Yeah, man." He's one of his mates or sort of guys come over. Yeah, man. Here, there's a card if you want to see a real fight. I'm like, "Oh, come on, lads. Come on, pack it in. <laughs> Wind your neck in." <laughs> and then they went, hey, "You're Josh Taylor." And I said, "Yeah, yeah." And they, they come over, and they we had a laugh. Yeah, we had a real good laugh. It was good. Actually, really nice guy. Yeah, really, really nice guy. It's all bravado, isn't it? What you see on camera. Is it, are you a fan of the polls? <sighs> to be honest with you, I don't really know them that well, obviously, but I don't necessarily agree with what's happening with the whole boxing world and what they're going into. But like Josh said, they're making money, and if that's what they're what to do, then fair enough. But I just I don't agree with what they're doing on the boxing side. But it is what it is. But he was yeah, no, he was a really nice guy. He was very down to earth and stuff no, like that. Sorry. Someone who is doing it right in the boxing world is uh, Mr. Undisputed himself in 18 fights. Just, uh, yeah, I mean, it hasn't sunk in for you. It probably hasn't sunk in for, for kind of your fans as well and yeah. for the whole country. Um, and you touched on a point there where obviously the Olympics didn't go the way Josh wanted to and he was going to pack it in. We, we didn't know this as the public. Um, so, yeah, what exactly did you tell him? And obviously it's, it's helped him uh, massively to get to this point. Well, obviously, it was just him being him at the time, he was like, I've had enough, I've obviously dedicated so much of my life already to to get to the Olympics and blah, 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 blah. and then um, he was like, I've had enough, that's me, and I was like, no, Josh, come on, you've got more in the bag and you've got so much more to prove to everybody what you've got, and like, well, look at him now, number one. It's all down to her, right? Eh? <laughs> that's it, that's it, I actually forgot about that, until you 
mentioned that there, but aye, aye it's, that was true. Aye, I was re- I was ready for parking it in after the Olympics. Aye, I was a, uh, I was just, just me be me throwing the dummy at the pram, you know, uh, because I'm a bad loser. But I was a, uh, I was gutted for days and days and days after it, um, and then you obviously come back and you get, you regroup and get back on it. But at the time I was like, ah, that's been done. Because I was miserable, I was making 60 kilograms and I was just hating them now. I was look like, I looked like a crackhead. I was like skinny and I then weak, I felt weak all the time and I just wasn't enjoying it. And then not to get the result and kind of get, no robbed, but the fight stolen off me. You know what I mean? Nicked off me. Not I never got beat, I never got out pointed, I never got out fought or boxed. They just stole off me by a daft wee point and he ran away and stole the fight. And I just felt, I was just like, oh, I'm not doing this anymore. I've had enough, and then look, a couple of days, a few pizzas in me after the Olympics, and I was all right. A couple of Big Macs and that at the at the, the Olympic Village, it was free all 24 hours. So I was a couple of pizzas, a couple of Big Macs. Uh, later, I was all right. I was fine again. Dummy was back in. <laughs> I guess it's a, a bigger message there to anyone in life, sport, whatever walk in life. If you're pursuing something and something doesn't quite go right at a particular time, keep going. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You know it's. You just have to kind of get all the, like Josh says, the wee monkey that's on your shoulder telling you that you can't do this, you can't do that, or if ever you're doubting yourself, you have to obviously keep that, push that away and just make sure that you're positive vibes all the time, definitely. Well, as I said, when you come back to the airport, it didn't really feel right to talk about what's next. It was about that moment there and then. But now you have had some time to reflect, aside from all the partying. Um, do want to talk about what is next. So, mandatory aside, I think the two names that you've been most linked with are Terence Crawford yeah. and Tiafimo Lopez. I do want to start with Lopez. Him and his old man um, have said, don't duck us. Uh, they suggested you're, you're, you're fearing him as well. Did you see any of them comments, Josh? Yeah, I've seen some of these. Why are you scared? Like, why would they be scared of Tiafimo Lopez? Why would they be scared of him? Like, it's, why would they duck him? He wasn't even on my radar. You know, he's got unfinished business to do it lightweight. Um, I feel he's the one that's ducking other fighters at his own weight. Uh, and, and like, so your Devin Haney's and your uh, Garcia's and things like that. You know, he's, he's got, uh, and the, the, the rematch with Loma. You know, he's, he's ducking them, he's running away from them. He's trying to go up and get the big fight against myself to cash in. Um, I see it as a bit of insecurity. Insecurity, you know, it's, uh, he's done well. He's done really well to beat Lomachenko. Um, but would they do it again if they fought again? I don't think so. So why would they? Why would they be? Why would they be scared? I think they're just kind of using p- perhaps Josh's name, a bit of yeah, clever yeah. publicity kind of thing as well, because you know Josh better than anyone. He's fought everyone in his career. Yeah. He's not scared of, any, of anyone. No, definitely. And like, I think I get my back up a wee bit more than what Josh does about these things, because when I <laughs> when I see them calling him out and whatever, I'm like, who's this? Who's that? But like Josh says, he's got all the belts and. When you're the the number one at your division, everybody's wanting a wee bit of you, and they want to obviously call you out to make noise and make their cell relevant, and that's obviously what's happening just now. But part of the game, you we'll know, take you all know the cooking it. It's all part of the game, isn't it? So the big circus, the big drama show, <laughs> big GGG. Well, I said you're not scared of anyone. Are you scared of her? A little bit, aye. Sometimes, aye. That's what. Aye, uh, best bar partner, like switching <laughs> the shoes and dishes and uh, the pots. Vet. Pots and that coming flying at me, you know, when she loses her rag. <laughs> They've got gloves there, but couldn't remember how we Nah, I'm all right. <laughs> Calling you out right now. I don't want to be 18 and 1. <laughs> yeah, of course, the other one is, is Terence Crawford. How, how realistic do you think that is, Josh, for next or maybe next year? It's very realistic. Um, it's a, it's an easy fight to make, you know. He's, he, he's struggling to get a fight at the minute. I think one of his fights fell through, didn't it, uh, a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Um, Again, so he's not fought for a long time. Uh, we're both under Bob Arum, you know. So it's it's a, it's all in house. So it's an easy, and easy fight to make. So I think it's a very realistic fight to make, and I, I would jump at the chance if it came around. I would take it tomorrow, and I feel I can win that fight. You know, everybody said, "Oh, a step too far," but everything was a step too far. Uh, Postal was a step too far. Progress was a step too far, and then Ramirez was a step too far. And I I keep proving everybody wrong, and I prove them wrong again. However, saying that, would you say at the moment, whether it's at 140, 147, perhaps that is the toughest opponent yes. you could go in with Terence Crawford? 
Yeah, I think so. He's a. I'm not going to bad mouth him. I think he's a. I think he's a great fighter. A great, great fighter. He's got it all. He can box. He can move. He can switch hit. Southport offer docks is just as smoothly as one side does the other. Um, he can fight. He's got the spite in him. He can punch. You know, so he's got it all. He's got it all. He's a really, really good fighter. And for me to win that fight, I need to be at my best. And if I'm at my best, I can win that fight because I can do it all as well. I can box. I can fight. I can switch. I can do it all as well. And I'm a bad little fucker as well when I get going. So. Um, I think I can win that fight, but I need to be at my best. So massive news uh, for Top Rank, uh, obviously who, who you're with, done a, a deal with Sky Sports, which is brilliant. Now you won't have that stress of, you know, I don't know how that undisputed fight never made it on Sky or BT, but that stress isn't there. You are going to be shown on Sky Sports, and these guys like Lopez and Crawford, they're going to be on Sky, so these fights can get even bigger within the UK. Yeah, yeah it's good, and Sky is a platform, a massive, massive platform. It's the biggest platform in the UK. Um, great machine you know it's a, it's a massive machine sky so um, i'm finally glad that i've got the platform that i deserve on sky sports and having that at the back of me now so that will really get my platform going now so now that it's been made hopefully they can start showing my fight on sky sports now as well just out of interest what's the most annoying thing about him and the best thing about him <laughs> um he shouts my name about 500 times in a, in a day that's the most annoying thing oh here is D, Danielle, 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 D, D, that's all I hear. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Open your eyes. Um, and the best thing I love about him is his passion. Like, he's so dedicated to what he does and being there for me all the time as well when I need him. But yeah, definitely his passion and his drive for, for life. That's what I love about him. Maybe same question to you. Oh, damn. Put me on the spot. Oh, no. No, nah, like, I, I just. I love her to bits, you know, she's a, she's there for me all the time, she's such a kind person, loving and generous, and funny, I'll give you that, we'll say it now, first time I'll give you your props, you're funny, <laughs> you're funny, uh, although most of it, she's funny at the time when she doesn't realise it, you know, so, aye, she just makes me laugh, and she's there all the time for me, and I love her to bits, she's such, she's such a good person. Didn't even say a bad thing about you, so. No, no, I. there is probably some, but, um, no, that's good. Thanks, babes. <laughs> <laughs> Just to close off then, of course, I think most likely next is going to be Jack Cadrell. He obviously did the honourable thing of waiting for this fight with yourself. Um, and that would be some special occasion. Two British fighters at hopefully Edinburgh Castle. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a massive thing, that. Yeah. I just, obviously, whether it be Edinburgh Castle or anywhere else in Scotland, I think we need to bring the fights back to Scotland and help, obviously, and be have the, the fights here for the boxing fans like for the UK we need some fights back home um, just so we can get everything up and running again you know what I mean it's uh, and obviously it's first defence which will obviously be Jack but um, it'll be massive so that's what we need back in we need that back in Scotland definitely yeah, it's not bad for a mandatory that no, one it's brilliant and it's the old uh, it's, it's the old Scotland England thing as well you know it's uh, the old enemy as it gets called you know so uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be great, and uh, I like Jack. I like Jack. Got a lot of time for him, you know. After the fight, I invited him up to my room right after the fight. Um, after I did my press conferences and that, he was there and he was sort of hanging around. And I says, "Come up, man, come up." So he came up for a while, we had a beer and had a wee chat and that. So yeah, I like Jack. I've got a lot of time for him, but that will change when the fight gets made, you know. And uh, he, his mindset will change as well. But uh, yeah, I, I like him. I've got a lot of time for him, so. I think that's most likely what's going to happen next. Um, so I'd like to honour the promise that was made, you know, that he steps aside on the promise that he gets to fight the winner. So yeah, I'd like to honour that. Um, but if something does come along and it's bigger and better, then I'm going to take it, you know, I'll fake it and move up or may fake it and do something. But I'd like to honour that, that, uh, that word and keep my word, you know, and I like Jack, I've got a lot of time for him. Well, I think I've got eyes burning in the back of my head. We need to let you go. So, Josh Taylor, <laughs> Daniel, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, obviously here with Everlast, and we'll speak soon, all right? Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.